Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you watched a couple of my previous videos on the topic of SMRNA-seq, single molecule RNA sequencing. And in fact, quite a few of you asked uh, me to cover a few other topics related to that. And this is exactly the reason why I'm recording this video on the topic of SM fish. So the goal for this video is to understand what SM fish is at a high level and in the next video we'll take a deep dive into how we can analyze the data sets sm fish data sets using a couple of standard python libraries that are available freely <laughs> you know they are open source libraries so if you want to be notified of that video or other videos in future this would be a great time to pause the video hit the subscribe button and while you're there try to find the thanks button if you're feeling extra generous. Okay, the goal, like I already mentioned for this video is to have a, or again, a quick understanding of what SM Fish is. To begin with, it stands for single molecule fluorescence in situ hybridization. And step one, let's understand what that term actually means. As you can relate, or probably no single molecule, we are referring to a single RNA molecule in this case, right? So the detection and analysis of a single RNA molecule is why we call this single molecule. And why do you wanna do that? Because it provides you information down to an RNA level. So you have high sensitivity and resolution uh, with this specific technique. Now, what does fluorescence mean? Fluorescence in general, what does it mean? You have a specific light or wavelength and you're hitting another material with that specific wavelength uh, or you're shining this other material at that wavelength and that material absorbs the light and gives off its own light. That's what fluorescence means. It absorbs one wavelength, gives off another wavelength. And that's what fluorescence is. In the context that we are talking right now, the emission of light from the RNA, not the RNA molecule itself, we'll talk about what's emitting this light. Basically these uh, uh, labeled probes are the ones that are emitting the light, but we are exciting it with a certain wavelength under our microscope, and it's actually giving us light in a specific wavelength. That's what fluorescence refers to. So obviously this is a microscopy-based technique. In situ, as you know, it's a Latin phrase, I believe, it means in its original pay, uh, place. So we are not extracting the, the, the cells you know, from the tissue, we are not extracting RNA, so we are actually analyzing everything in its place. That's why it's called in situ. And uh, hybridization, if you're a biologist, you know what we are talking about, right? So the binding of uh, the two complementary nucleic acids is referred to as hybridization. In our context, we are looking at the hybridization between the fluorescently labeled probes and the RNA itself, meaning our labeled probe is binding to the RNA. So when that kind of gets fluoresced, we know exactly what type of RNA is giving off that light, or at least we infer that, hey, this is the RNA I am, uh, I'm, I'm uh, counting or analyzing. So in summary, single molecule fluorescence in situ hybridization is a single molecule technique where we use fluorescent microscope and the sample is in situ in the tissue itself and we rely on hybridization. So now let's kind of take it to the next level where we just understand the principles of this SM fish. Like we already mentioned, it uses a flu uh, fluorescently labeled probe that binds with the specific RNA molecule. And then that probe fluoresces, and then we say that, aha, uh -huh, I have this RNA down here, right? So that's what uh, SMFish uses, and each probe, like you can have multiple probes, and each of these probes are designed to hybridize to a specific sequence inside the RNA. So we can kind of infer that, hey, this, uh, when it lights up, we know that, okay, we are looking or studying this specific type of RNA. Okay, and the probes are designed to be complementary to the target RNA, obviously. So you know that they, uh, these, these probes are binding to a specific uh, RNA molecule. And uh, how does that uh, happen, that binding happen upon the hybridization, right? So the fluorescent probes generate a signal that can be visualized using our fluorescence microscopy. So uh, <clears throat> now why, why use SMFish? What's the advantage of SMFish in, in other words? Of course, it gives us high sensitivity because it enables the detection of down to a single molecule level, single RNA molecule. So you're not just saying, uh, unlike uh, some sequencing techniques where you say, okay, the collection of all of these uh, cells, what what is the signal uh, that we get down to? You know, uh, but certain sequencing techniques, it gives you down to single cell level, right? 
And in this case, it's a very visual technique because this is microscopy based and we're going down to a single RNA level. And single cell resolution is exactly what we get. In fact, subcellular resolution is something that we can actually achieve with this SM fish technique. That's one of the best uh, uh, features or reasons why you should be using SM fish. And of course, quantitative analysis because you are looking at okay uh, for this specific wavelength, you have a specific uh, you know probe that's being lined uh, lighted up, which means you're kind of studying a specific type of uh, RNA molecule and then you change the light and you do something else and you, it can be multiplexing. You can have 10 different probes. It's not just one single type of RNA. You can study 10 different types or a combination of this. And the analysis comes down to, this is why I say there is no standard analysis. In a way, I'll talk about it in a second, basically summarizing the analysis steps, but you can be working with a single probe. You can be working with four, you can be working with 10 or more. So this is where the multiplexing comes in and at which point uh, your specific analysis route will be very unique to what you're trying to study. But at a high level, you have, uh, quantification being done down to uh, 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 about gene expression. That's pretty much it. And spatial information, I already mentioned, down to a subcellular level within, uh, even inside the cell, you can say, hey, these are the signals that I'm getting from within the nucleus, and these are the ones outside the nucleus within a given cell. So uh, the spatial resolution is the one of the biggest advantages of SM fish. Now, how do you perform this experiment at a high level? Again, if you are already doing this, obviously I'm just saying what you already know, but for th those uh, who are thinking about getting into this SM fish or trying to learn a new technique, this is a high level explanation. So there is a cells or whatever the tissue that you're working with, it gets fixed, primulized, and then hybridized. And hybridized is basically you're, you're adding this fluorescently labeled probes, and you know that these probes go to a specific type of uh, uh, RNA. And then once it goes there, now you put the sample under the microscope, you go ahead and image it under whatever the specific wavelength that you know excites this specific type of probe. And then you get your images with a whole bunch of signals. And the type of signal is like a bunch of spots, for example. And then it comes down to analysis. The image images, you count the number of spots, you count number of clusters, and are these spots like within the nucleus? If they are within the nucleus, how far are they, uh, uh, you know, away from the cell membrane, for example? So you can do all kinds of uh, analysis, obviously based on the type of experiment that you're performing. So how do you analyze this SM fish data? I, like I just said, the specific type depends on the type of research question you're trying to answer and the type of samples that you prepared. You know, if it's only a single plex meaning you only have a single signal uh, you know coming from your RNA then yeah there may be certain certain uh, analysis steps that you follow but if it is like 10 plex for example then uh, you may be looking at co-localization or uh, a combination of these different uh, different signals at different wavelengths so the analysis again there is no specific path but at a high level there are a few key steps step number one is spot and cluster detection so on the left hand side here you see uh, some signal uh, obviously you can see two cells that are close by and uh, and you see these spots lining up and there are certain bright spots which could be a a, a cluster of these uh, spots but each of these spots is basically a good response that we are getting from a uh, from a molecule so uh, we need to count these spots that's step one uh, and if you have multiplex like 10x, then you have to count these spots or detect and analyze these on all of these 10 images and put the data together to uh, infer, uh, you know, whatever the insights you would like to gain from there. Now, the spots are detected. And of course, you also need to segment uh, the cells and uh, nuclei. If you have like typically you also have in addition to these RNA, you also have uh, these stained with DAPI. So you can easily detect the nucleus and you can segment the nucleus. So in some cases, you may not have the full cell context because sometimes cells can be difficult to detect or depending on how you prepare the sample. But usually when you put DAPI, 
you can clearly detect where the nucleus is and you can count these parts within the nucleus uh, easily. So uh, I'll, I'll talk about that. At least we'll work with a couple of data sets in the next tutorial. In one where you have cells and nuclei clearly defined, in one you only have nuclei. So we'll look at that uh, next week, but typically segmentation is a good step and there are various method ways you can segment your cells. Uh, my favorite way is using cell pose for cellular segmentation and using uh, Stardist for nuclei segmentation. But in this case, you don't need any fancy deep learning techniques to segment uh, nuclei for sure. You can just threshold and separate the objects. Uh, the specific approach depends on the complexity. Again, let's save all of that for the next tutorial, but for now I wanna at a high level give you what the typical process involves. And uh, once these are segmented and the spots are detected, now you're down to statistical analysis, right? I mean, what is the average distance of uh, RNA spots from the cell boundary? Uh, and what proportion of these spots are within the nucleus versus how many of them are in cytoplasm. So there is a lot of information that you can actually gain and how that helps you. Again, it comes down to your research question. And if you have multiplex, then you can actually see what is the, uh, you know, do I see a combination of, for example, sci-fi, DS-RED, and GFP signals all at a given spot? Or do I see a combination of these at a given spot? So this is the type of uh, statistical analysis that you need to perform. And do not forget visualization. We are humans, we love to see things, and visualization is a great way of uh, gaining insights uh, which basically means plotting, right, in, in most cases. And where is the nuclei in relation to the cell and how many spots are within the nuclei uh, versus outside in the cytoplasm, uh, cytoplasmic area. And how are my, if it is a multiplexed uh, images, then how are my individual uh, channels, in this case, so as you can see on the screen, sci-fi, CY5 and DS-RED and GFP channels, how are they, uh, you know, distributed. What is the RNA count distribution within each of these channels? So visualization, again, is another important aspect. So I think uh, this gives you a good overview of exactly what uh, what this uh, uh, SMFish technique is. And again, I wanted to make this a very short video. Of course, it's going to be around 10 to 12, 13, 14 minute video, but I hope it gives you a good introduction uh, of for us, at least for the next tutorial, which is jumping into our Python code. Okay, I hope to see you in the next tutorial. And again, until then, please keep learning and hit the subscribe button right now. Thank you.